predictions of the Kingway for Charity Easter Edition 2015 Day 2. We have two quarterfinals left for you to decide our second semi-final for tomorrow. We've already decided one. It's going to be Jab versus Chucky in our first best of seven tomorrow. I'm Calum Leslie with TJ Zumokuti Sanders casting alongside me. And uh, we got one of the probably the most exciting matchup in these quarterfinals coming up now. It's going to be Tides of Time versus Gara. Two former teammates, two players at the very who were at the very top of the game last year are going to collide here in the King for Charity Tournament. Yeah, the, both these players had really impressive showings. We saw Tides yesterday, or we saw both of them earlier on today. Uh, Tides actually picked up a win with his Mill Druid, <laughs> and uh, that was really impressive stuff. I'm really looking forward to seeing that deck. And Gara had a little bit more of a standard lineup. Uh, Gara's uh, he had one of the most one-sided series of the tournament so far, um, but uh, we didn't really get to see much of his decks. He went pretty quickly with a lot of them, so. Uh, this uh, again, they, there's a lot on the line here because I'm sure these guys want bragging rights. Ties the time uh, when he left Temple Storm, there was some slight drama surrounding it. Uh, people don't really know why he left, but I'm sure uh, both these players want to rep represent their teams well. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ties of Time, as we saw, as we talked about this morning, is a player who took a little bit of a hiatus uh, from Hearthstone to to come in and is coming back now into some tournaments like Buy Game House Cup. We're looking to stake his claim here as still being one of the best players in the world. Was on the top of the Gosu Gamers rankings at one point last year, in particular after winning the WEC tournament. And Gara is a very, very consistent player as well. He's a very, very strong player, very strong deck builder. And uh, it'll be interesting to see these two collide, I think possibly for the first time since Tides of Time left the team. Yeah, I, I think that seems pretty accurate. And... Um... Both these guys have had mild success in the past, but as far as like their all-time records go, I think Tides of Time it has actually had more bigger tournament victories or bigger tournament placings than Gara has. Since Gara is in, uh, since he first joined Temple Storm, he hasn't really had a lot of breakout performances. He hasn't really you, you don't really see him a lot in a lot of the semifinals and finals of really big tournaments. Where Tides has made it there multiple times, and that was even with him taking a couple month break. So. Um, I'm not sure how Tides' Mill Druid deck is going to stack up against Gara's lineup, but it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, it was he. Uh, I don't even know what to predict, to be honest, with that, that Mill Druid. It's just really fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting, as you said, to see how that stacks up. We saw it against D2 earlier today. And the uh, D2 not expecting the combo. If Gara's smart, he was watching that match and he saw what he's going to be going up against. And uh, it's going to be a little bit, it is a little bit daunting, like you said, going up against a deck that you maybe haven't played against so much or you haven't seen, you don't really know what, how the deck is. I mean, there's some decks like Freeze Mage where you can effectively count the cards that you're seeing. You can know exactly what's left in the deck based on what you've already seen. Um, you see a lot of players do that in tournaments. They'll write down the cards that they see. And, you know, when they see the second Fireball or the second Frostbolt or, you know, they see a Flame Strike and a Blizzard, they'll write down so they know exactly what's left. But with this Mill Druid, you don't know exactly what it is that's coming. But if he was watching the match early, he knows to be aware of the combo. But we're not going to see that match for a while. It's actually going to be Hunter versus Hunter to start with. Uh, oh, yes. Both have Hunter and Warlock. It's Mage, Hunter, and Warlock for Gara, And the Druid, the Mill Druid, Hunter, and Warlock for Tides. Uh, so if I remember correctly, both of these guys are playing Face Hunter. Uh, Jab was the only player who was playing any other variation besides. Yeah. And he had them more... More of a mid rangey more of a mid rangey hunter with uh, yeah, exactly. Japan, with the Savannah High mains. Um, and it, it always it, it sucks to say it, but a lot of times in mirror matchups, especially in faster mirror matchups, it does come down to early draws. It comes down to like especially face hunter versus face hunter, it's just who can draw into their higher impact spells first. Weapons mean a big deal because it's unimpeded damage. That you're, you're, it's going to be your like Eagle Horn Bow is going to be six damage for three mana. Um, your Glaive Zuka is going to be usually five damage for two mana. So those types of things are are really crucial draws in this type of matchup where it's basically just a race. Yeah, exactly. I think that that is what it's going to come down to, and you know, we don't like we're not obviously not saying that uh, Hearthstone's all luck and anyone can be a professional Hearthstone player. We're not saying that. Uh, especially not in French accent, but 
it is going to come down to really how, how what these players are going to draw in the early game, how good their hands are. If their hands are really clunky and they can't get anything going, you know, if they draw multiple weapons or they draw early kill commands, things like that, that could be a real problem for them. But uh, this game's coming up now. It's I can see the players queuing into it and getting started. So we're just waiting for the spectate to, to fill up. I mean, double trap would be the worst thing. I, I have seen... I can't remember which game it was. I think it was more Mech Mage I've seen this, but like double secret, double mad scientist opening four cards. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of opening hand that makes you probably think about killing yourself. On the other hand, um, explosive trap in this matchup is actually really good because it's it's a damage that you can do. Plus, it's usually blocks a lot of damage from your opponent. Um, not a lot of damage, but if they don't have a weapon available, you usually, sometimes you have to throw like a wolf rider into it or whatever you have on the board. So, uh, strategic use of explosive trap is good, and you can actually see um, on the mulligans on your screen. Tons of time actually holds on to it, so uh, that's just a uh, shows how how much this card is valued in this matchup. Yeah, so both do pick up one drops. Uh, the Glaive Zuka in hand for tides is a pretty good start as well. The the coin could be pretty crucial if you use it at the right time. <laughs> the leper gnome trades. He's thinking about conning out the abusive sergeant as well, but I didn't bother. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What do you think about silence on the leper gnome here? Mm. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> in a way, it seems good just because he, he, I said this is a race and um, that's something that you want to do, but that it's... It's a cheap beast that you can use later on for kill command plays. Yeah, that is uh, true. So there's also there's uh, things like being able to get through Misha. It's one of the things that you might want to save it for. Yeah. No, no, that's true. I was just uh, just throwing it out there. Just, you know, speculating, spitballing. Yeah, we yeah. do see that explosive trap come down from uh, Tides. I'm trying to keep track of who's, which hunter is which at this point. Not always the easiest. And Eagle Horn Bull feels pretty strong here. You can use it to trigger the uh, explosive trap. I really like Ty the, the still picture that Tots uses. When it's not his turn, he faces away. And when it is his turn, he faces the board. Yeah, we just, you know, only looks at the board when he has to. Movie magic. So he actually goes with a wolf rider here. It's like a metaphor about face hunter. They don't even have and... to look at the board. This juggle's pretty important. Oh, goes to face. If I'd gone to the Wolf Rider, that would have been a really good tempo swing for Tides. Yeah. Uh, I think Gara's still in a little bit of trouble because he doesn't have Unleash the Hound, which is sort of your comeback mechanic in, in this matchup. And he doesn't want to take face damage, but he has to throw this Wolf Rider into the Knife Juggler. And then I'm sure he's going to Knife Juggler and Mad Scientist to try and get, uh, juggle one of the creatures off here. But this, a little bit of emotes. Ah, oh, this is just really rough though, because his knife juggler is going to get traded into by a glaive zuka. Um, yeah, by a glaive zuka, which is if he had unleashed and had, had been able to wait one more turn for that, that would have been really good. And he actually has a lot of burst because uh, I don't know if a lot of people here remember, but back in the day, Leroy unleash used to be a pretty sick combo disgusting combo because set for seven Horrible. mana you're automatically guaranteeing yourself uh eight damage uh, which is pretty good and that's if they have no creatures on the board because you're summoning two whelps for your opponent so you're automatically gonna get two hounds uh so usually it's like a nine damage burst combo which leroy of course used to be four mana so it was pretty reliable and at least used to be two yeah <laughs> so when it was a six mana combo it was pretty good now at 8 mana, slightly less good. Yeah. He's thinking if he has time to use the Glaive Zuka here to proc the trap and then equip the Eagle Horn Bow on top of it, or if he has to override the Glaive Zuka with the Eagle Horn Bow. Because he can't attack him with Leroy here just because uh just going to get killed by Explosive Trap. So he's actually going to override the Glaive Zuka. He doesn't think that he has time. Oh no, he, he didn't attack with it at all. Okay. That's interesting. That's interesting, really Gopro. interesting. I'm not sure I like that. I think you need to get a secret down as quick oh, as no, possible. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's good. He didn't want to give him a charge from the bow. Yeah. I get, yeah, that does give Gara. 
a difficult decision here on whether or not to. Oh no! Actually, this is okay. Ah, uh, no, no. He was hoping he didn't have direct damage this turn because what he could have done is uh, next turn he could have hero power and he could have set up a lethal on the same turn that he had Leroy unleash, but it would come. It wouldn't come for a couple more turns, so it'd be really hard to do. Oh, there's Arcane Golem. Yeah, so the Unleashed Science is going to trade. He's going to proc the trap with the bow. And I guess he's just going to hero power, I think. Mm -hmm. So next turn, he can do uh, six damage from Leroy plus eight damage. Uh, he is sitting on lethal next turn. Uh, what does he need here? He needs kill command. That's not going to do it. I think yep, that's, that's going to be tides. it. Yeah, so Tides is going to take the face hunter mirror match. Quit going, but uh, you know it was never going to be a, never going to be a slow game in, with face hunter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, face hunter versus face hunter probably the fastest matchup that you can find in competitive Hearthstone. Yep. Actually, it's in any any well. Hearthstone, competitive, non-competitive, casual, anything with face hunter. So that's game number one. Tide's going up one to zero. Garth does still have the Face Hunter though, and actually, this is kind of okay because Face Hunter does have good matchups. And to to lose your face, Tide's, Tide's to lose his Face Hunter uh, this early on might actually work out for Gar in the matchup. Well, we can yeah, we can take a look at the rest of Tide's decks. He has uh, Warlock, <laughs> which we remember to be Zoo. Face Hunter's got to be really good against Mildred, right? Because you can't mill a face on her. I don't think you really care how many car. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, you can't mill a face on her, surely. To, to be honest, I don't really know uh, what matchups Mill Druid is strong against and and what they aren't. Um, maybe uh, in between these matches, I'll I'll send a tweet to Freshka real quick so he can give me a little a little lesson on on what decks Mill Druid is actually strong against. If Tree of Life wasn't one of the cards we saw, I'm, I'm, it may not be, but I'm sure it was in there. Well, not sure, but I, I would guess that it is in there. I know it may have been cut in favor of the combo. That's entirely possible, I think. That's true. The Tree Very of Life, that, that sort of end game is swapped out for the the combo end game. But we will, we will have to wait and see. We're not actually going to get to see the Druid just now. Gar is going to stay with the Face Hunter against the uh, the Zoo Lock of Tides. So it's going to be game number two, and if Tides can get a second win here, obviously, big advantage being 2-0 up, but Gara's going to really hope to take one back here with his face hunter. It's a pretty decent matchup for him. Just because uh, the new zoo with the uh, Imp Gang boss and uh, Implosion makes Unleash the Hounds that much stronger. Now, I know that's, that's just one card, and one card that's actually strong in the matchup, uh, but I still think that Face Hunter uh, usually can come out on top in races as well. So uh, I really like that matchup for the Face Hunter. So it's going to be another quick match, I'm sure. This one probably not as quick as the first one that we saw, but uh, both players playing really fast decks. It's worth, thing, worth saying as well that all these quarterfinals are essentially matches for $500. It's uh, a best of five to guarantee yourself finishing in the money because top four... Uh, you guaranteed five hundred dollars for for getting into the semifinals. So these are all matchups that make the difference between getting some money for this tournament and not. So that's that's pretty significant for the players. But yeah, let's get into the game here. Face Hunter versus the Zoo. I remember the Zoo from Tides was the uh, it was the one with, with not too much demons, but it did have the Void Collar in it, and I think yeah. he did have the Sea Giant as well. Yeah, a little bit of a clunky start because he has both weapons, but it's not too bad. Uh, the one bad thing, though, is that he's not going to be able to set up a turn where he can Leper Gnome and Glaive Zuka. So this Voidwalker is just going to trade right into this Leper Gnome and basically just make it a two damage nuke, which I guess isn't too bad, but I'm sure he had higher hopes for that little Leper Gnome. Yeah. Silence in the egg is pretty good, though he may he may regret using that later if it comes down to a void caller. But it feels pretty good if he's playing things like power overwhelming, and he does ha he did have the power overwhelming in his hand. We could well have seen that last turn. All right, let's see it. Time to race. 
a very slow start oh. from the face hunter. He holds back on the bow. That's pretty interesting. I'm Which, not sure what to make of that. I think he's trying to be conservative with it so that he gets procs off with the with the explosive trap. I talked about it a little bit earlier, but um, against Zoo is one of the only matchups where a face hunter actually plays a little bit more of a control style earlier. You can't really call it a control style because it's sort of just a desperation <laughs> move. Um, but this is actually really rough because the explosive trap is only going to clear off those 1-1 one -one spiders. It's not going to even fully clear off the taunt. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a really weak explosive trap, but it does go up. It's going to give him a charge of his bow as well, so he's basically refreshing that. Um, but, I mean, this is one of those situations where the zoo has taken so much control over the board that even if the hunter manages to claw their way back with an Unleash the Hounds, it's still the race might go into the Warlock's favor. Yeah, this is where Zoo really takes control of this matchup, just being able to control the board really well and not allow your opponent an inch to get anything going on the board, and that could be really a big problem. He's probably going to have the Animal Companion here with the Knife Juggler. See what he gets from this. Misha would probably be best, I think. Mm, Leok, not good. He's probably going to want to take out the juggler here. Take three Ooh. damage to the dome. And that sea giant is coming down next turn, most likely. Can't, yeah, th there's no way to prevent the sea giant. Obviously, you don't know the sea giant's coming, but. Oh, we could see. He could trade. He could even clear the board here. And play Sea Giant. But I think he probably just goes face. If he goes face, why wouldn't he play the Abusive Sergeant? Okay, he's gonna trade the Knife Juggler. Okay, that makes sense then. Because the playing the Abusive Sergeant on the board would uh, would still allow you to play the Sea Giant, but it would get you an extra couple damage. I I don't know why he wouldn't play the Abusive Sergeant in that situation. Guess he's maybe a little bit afraid of Unleash the Hounds. Or he's going for a surprise win. Um, he actually has Lethal in his hand. Uh, sea Giant, uh, or Sea Giant Power Woman Abusive Sergeant is going to be 14 damage. So that's game. Wow, another <laughs> quick series, and it's going to be Gara leveling the series at one to one. Sorry, it's going to be Tides going two 0 up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Zoo here, my mistake. And yeah, Gara is not happy with that. You can see. And, and Tides just mocks him with his still photo. So. We had Tides on camera earlier. I don't know why. I don't know why we don't have it now. Yeah, that's suspicious. Might be playing from his phone. Who knows? Maybe he's maybe he's in the bathroom right now, playing yeah. on his phone. It's possible. Uh, playing from your, playing from your phone or your tablet is actually a way to protect yourself from being DDoSed. So if you're a player and you you want that sort of interaction, then mm. that's the the most reliable way to play. It does make it harder for you to make plays more accurately. By judging by how fast he was playing, it looked like he was playing with the mouse, but... I think so. Maybe his so, webcam just broke. Okay. We now get to see the Mildred. <laughs> He's got three tries. Three tries to win with Mildred. And it's going to be the Face Hunter again, so... I think this is a pretty good matchup for Face Hunter. Yeah. I just don't, I don't think you can mill Face Hunter. I don't know, though. Mildred... I don't know if it's a good matchup, actually. Because Mildred has so much heal. He's got Antique Heal Bot. He's got double healing healing touch. And I think he has a Tree of Life as well. How do you do with Tree of Life as Mildred? You can't. You're, or you add a, as, how do you do with Tree of Life as a face hunter? You, you can't. You run out of damage. If the, your opponent heals, gets to turn 9 and is able to use Tree of Life, the game's pretty much over because the hunter just doesn't have enough burn to get through 60 points of hell. Um, and I don't know if you're too worried about giving a face hunter cards. I, I right. actually really think that the Mildred has a really solid chance against this matchup just because of the sheer amount of heal that a, that a Mildred can actually put out. And he actually holds on to the anti heal bot, so. Uh, not too bad. Uh, we also see the Volcanic Lumbers in this deck as well, which could be really tough for uh, Face Hunter to get through if you can play those on an early turn. That's true. I mean, we haven't seen a Hunter's Market, so I've pretty rarely seen Tech Card in 
face hunter these days. Yeah. This actually might favor tithes in this matchup. <sighs> I don't know that hand's pretty. Yeah, that hand's pretty clunky. Drawing into a two drop, an actual body as a two drop here was really important because if you just yeah. hero powered here, it yeah, that'd be really bad. hard. So he does have the body here. His tight's just gonna, yeah, he's gonna hit, for, go for face with the hero power. Has a cold light next turn if he wants to go that way, but animal companion gonna come down. Pretty easy decision for Gara. Doesn't get, hasn't rolled a huffer. That's, that's disappointing. It's still an absurd amount of damage, though. He's gonna innovate out of the antique heal ball here, I think. Yeah. Actually, wasting points of the antique heal bot's heal. But he's, he's already drawn healing touch, so I guess. <laughs> he's got so much heal. Doesn't really matter. I'm sure Gara watched the game support to, to actually realize that this is a male druid. Ah, oh, so difficult. What, it's so difficult to know what to do as a face hunter. I guess you just have to. <laughs> it's. Yeah, yeah. I think no, and that's that's something you never usually say. With I face think hunter. the instructions for face hunter are in the name of the deck. Well, yes, but I mean, like, I, I, what are you what are you playing to here? What's your what's your win condition? What are you coming up against? How do you deal with the threats that are coming down? If you saw them, you know. There is no threats that are coming down. <laughs> well, Volcanic Lumberer! Volcanic Lumberer is a big threat. Yeah, that's true. It's going to be a while before that comes out, but you're right, that is a threat. Uh, Tides well, is already at 11 health. Yeah, I was just going to say, he is getting pretty low here. It's uh, This may well be an academic conversation, because <laughs> the Face Hunter is doing what it does best. Are we going to see Starfall? Huh. Starfall is difficult because you can't then you can't proc the trap this turn even with the hero power but even procking the trap leaves you so low he's afraid that he's going to die next turn if he doesn't clear what's on the board um, I think he's afraid if he plays Cool Light Oracle that he's just going to be dead um, um, and he is right uh, not quite he has 10 damage total no, he, no, he, he, off board. he'd be yeah. yeah he'd be one he'd be one mana off being able to throw in a hero power as well Ooh. but yeah one mana off lethal so this is actually really tough for him to be able to play volcanic lumber because he's he's not really going to ever kill more than one creature in a single turn unless yeah there's an Unleash the Hounds, but uh, he's not going to ever build up a board big enough for Unleash the Hounds to spawn more than one, maybe two creatures. Exactly. We're going to see the healing touch here, so that's going to keep him alive for at least another turn, possibly, unless yeah. he draws something. Next turn, he can innervate out the Volcanic Lumber, so that's pretty good. Still, yeah, that's not bad. No lethal. Oh, Leoc, that's rough. That's really Yeah, rough. that's really bad. Gar's not happy with that either. His his animal companion rolls have been really bad. That one huffer that we saw earlier, the sad huffer that had to trade instead of going face. He went and told all his brethren, all his huffer brethren, and uh, they're now writhing. They're on strike. They are on strike. So we didn't see the volcanic lumber. Flare is interesting. Wow. <laughs> well, there's Leroy. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty good for Volcanic Lumberer, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's not going to matter because Kill Command is going to come down unless he no, heals. No, he can Volcanic Lumber and uh, Hero Power. Uh, but there's enough to Owl Kill Command a uh, Hero Power for the yeah. Hunter. Mm -hmm. I think so he has can to, do seven. He has to use Ancient of Lore to heal here. Okay. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He picks the right choice. And he's going to innervate hero power to get a little bit more heal. Wow, this is bold. Bold moves. Unleash the hounds. Still not enough. Gar's like, what the heck? 
Where's all this heal coming from? Is he just going to go for the kill command here? Yeah, he's just going to go for it. Hope he top stacks another one. Now he's got the Unleash the Hounds. Poison Seeds doesn't really help. I guess the Lumberer keeps you alive. Hmm. Cold Oracle might be the play. No, it looks like not. Yeah, I think you gotta go for the taunt. Oh! <laughs> Beast of Sergeant. Not gonna do it! Oh deck. no! He can't attack though here. He just has no. to. No. Uh, he basically has to wait until he has lethal or try and draw into heal. Um, he's trying to think if he should put bodies on the board, but um, let's see. Force, he couldn't even force a nature savage or because he wouldn't have enough mana to actually use the hero power. Uh, as a desperation attempt, he could try and force a draw with that play, but uh, cool that Oracle sort of has to be the play here because he yeah. needs to draw into heal. Uh, he's got another healing touch in the deck. I think he's got another anti kill bot as well. Keeper of the Grove, not going to do it. Swipe, Swipe not going to do it. Not going to do it. He is putting more damage on. He is going to heal out of range of that hero power. Can he draw the kill command? He needs direct damage. Well, he's, yeah, he, he oh, has silence. it. He can, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he drew it to the owl so he okay. can silence. Unleash the Hounds, Hero Power, that's going to be it. So Gara is going to get that win there, yeah. thankfully. That was actually pretty close because uh, there was actually a lot of ways that he could heal out of range. Uh, he still had, uh, like I said, an anti kill bot left. He still had a healing touch left. He'd been, he had hadn't been through that much of his deck yet, but um, that's the power of that Mill Druid. I mean, he draws into one more stabilization card. Like he draws into, if he draws into a healing touch there, there's a good chance... Not a good chance, but there's a chance that he wins. So, two more tries for the Mildred. Yeah, indeed. This is uh, that was pretty frustrating for the face hunter, but he did get it there eventually. Tide's not getting the three-zero victory, but he does have the mage and the warlock, and it's it's going to be the warlock. So it's going to be Druid versus Zoo again. No idea how this matchup goes with Mildred. It was the Paladin of D2E beat with it earlier, right? Paladin, yeah. Yeah, so we haven't even seen any of these matchups before. Wonderful. I think, I think it does quite a bit better against slower decks. Because it gives you time to draw into your own stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, and like card, the combos like Poison Seed, Starfall, Poison Seed, Starfall, maybe even Volcanic Lumber, are so much weaker against faster decks just because uh, usually you're not going to have that much on the board to begin with. Zoo probably will fare a little bit better. He'll probably fare a little bit better against than Face Hunter. Uh, just because a lot of damage isn't going to come from hand, it's going to come from the board. So it'll give Tides time to react. Those combos like Poison Seed Starfall are actually going to do something if he can get to turn 9. Yep, yeah, so it's going to be the Zoo for Gara against the Mill Druid for Tides of Time. Do you, uh, do you hold on to the healing touch here? I think if you're going to hold on to any healing, you hold on to the antique heal bot. Yeah. Uh, just because it's a body as well. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, there's a chance. If he thinks that he's going to get blown out early on, and he wants to guarantee that he's going to have healing touch, then he'll keep it. But I don't think you really hold on to healing, too. Yep, that's pretty fair. And not the greatest start for the zoo. Doesn't have any one drops. And uh, Knife Juggler by its own. Could be a little bit, a little bit of an issue, but I guess against the Mildred, you feel a little bit safe. They don't have a huge amount of uh, damage they can do. They do have the swipes, but I guess the slower start isn't isn't the biggest problem in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow, he's that's interesting. Take damage over two turns. Well, next turn he can coin swipe. Uh, so Imp, Imp Gang Boss is going to come out here. Coins. Yeah, but that's really bad. Coin swipe takes care of it. That's a really good heads up play from Tides, tanking the three damage there. Taking six damage from the knife juggler, but is able to use. Oh. oh, that's really interesting. If he doesn't coin swipe here, hmm, he just cold lights. It's pretty greedy. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, he might be saving it for a bigger board, um, because if you coin swipe, you're not really developing anything. You're using your coin, 
which can be paired with Wild Pyromancer to make for some bigger combo plays uh, to help clear the board. And you're also not really getting into anything. He's getting further in his deck this way. He's also putting a body on the board. So it's not the worst thing in the world. He's going to take a lot more damage in the process. Uh, but the way the way he's been playing, it doesn't seem like he's really afraid to take much damage early on in order to set himself up for better plays later on. Yeah, I mean, he does have a decent swipe play that if the Void Caller comes down here. Though, the Void Caller is going to pull a Doom Guard or an Imp Gang boss, so. Oh, well, this turn he can um, Hero Power Innervate Swipe. Ooh! Yeah, he's just gonna not kill the Void Caller. Yeah. I think that's okay. You never know what's gonna come out the back end of that thing. Yeah. And we see there is a Doom Guard in hand, as well as another in game boss, which would be really difficult to deal with. So I think this is okay dealing with just uh, three, kind of three and a half minions, I guess, if you count that extra 1 1. But there's another gang boss, there's a Haunted Creeper, there's a Dire Wolf. And Gara's building up to the Sea Giant here, and this this looks like pretty much the identical zoo deck that Tides was playing. Wait, is Gara's last deck Freeze Mage? I assume so. I don't think we saw any Mech Mage until Muzzy. Mildred, so, I think, Rex Freeze Mage. Yeah. That's... Yeah. <laughs> That'll be pretty interesting. I thinking about it, I think this Mildred might be here just to target Mech Mage, or just to target Freeze Mage. That would be a very astute pick from Tights. Yeah. That'd be pretty ridiculous if that's the case. Alright, well we're gonna see... Oh, man. Okay, he's just going for... Does he have lethal? Yeah. No, he's... Well, yeah, yeah Tides is gonna concede, so yeah. it's gonna go up to 2-2. Two, two. And it's going to come down to the Freeze Mage versus the Druid, and as I TJ think... was just realizing. Yeah. That game was pretty long over. I don't think the... Um, I think that matchup's even worse, just because the, it's so hard for... You, you look at those boards, he, there's no way that he can deal with anything that comes out of that board caller. So he had to ignore it. By the time, he'd already taken too much damage, so... Um, Freeze Mage up next, and I think Tides has a really good shot. Yeah, this could be a really, really bad matchup for Gara. As you say, I mean, Freeze Mage, you're, you're holding a lot of cards and you want to draw and fill up your hand with all the spells you need. Not, e and... not even that. All you have to do is just yeah. draw early on and just draw into your heal. What yeah. do you do after Alex draws it if he BGHs, healing touches, and then um, healing touches again? All of a sudden a he's third. at 30 health. And Here, you're, here's, you're here's Alex a third way you lose. Here's a third way you lose. You have 10 cards, he plays Cold Light Oracle, you discard Alex Straza and Pyroblast, or Fireballs, or Antoninus. There's just so many really crucial linchpin cards that you can discard in this matchup. Yeah. This this was really tough for Gara. And like you say, I think this... You might be right that this Mill Druid is exactly here to target Freeze Mage, and we've seen a lot of Freeze Mage. Pretty much everyone except from Muzzy, I think, who brought Mage. And pretty much everyone brought Mage, I think. Uh, Jab didn't bring Mage. I'm trying to have a look and see who else didn't bring Mage. Uh, Tyson Show didn't bring Mage. But apart from that, and D2, a lot of people brought Mage. And of the people in the semi-finals, Chucky has Freeze Mage. Uh, Forsen has Freeze Mage. So there are two people in this uh, potentially being the semi-finals. That's pretty crazy. This is... Um pretty awesome and it's a really good read from him if that's the case it just doesn't seem like there's many ways for uh freeze mage to be able to come out on top of this matchup unless the mill druid draws poorly even if the mill druid doesn't manage to mill anything even if uh there's no discards from the freeze mage or uh, he doesn't isn't able to make him discard cards then it's still i think really strong just because of the sheer healing alone Freeze Mages have a limited amount of damage. Unless they get, like, an infinite Archimage Antonina set up, which is really hard to do, especially against cards like Naturalize. Yeah. They just, they have a finite amount of damage. They have burn spells, and that's just about it. That's why they have trouble beating Warriors, because if Warriors are able to heal through all the damage that they do, there's no way for them to win because they just can't do enough damage. They don't have creatures. Double healing touch already in hand. Yeah. Plus cold light oracle. So if the hand gets too full, 
If Gar gets a little bit too hyphy with his draw, <clears throat> Todd's can punish. He does have an arcane intellect. This is actually been it's been okay so far for Gar. He's been able to empty his hand of the two loot hoarders and the two mad scientists. So he's getting his cards out. I would save the Colette Oracle. Yeah, I think so. Naturalize. Naturalize. Naturalize cold light puts him at ten, so he's gonna burn a card. Yep. But it's... he's gonna be it's gonna be a uh because of the loot hoarder, he's gonna draw three. And then cold light, so he's gonna burn one here <laughs> and then burn a draw. It's so great. What's he burning? That's an ice lance. And a, okay, well, an arcane intellect is. He actually probably wants to burn that arcane intellect. Yeah, I was gonna say that's actually. Gar is gonna be pretty happy with but that. What does arcane he do intellect. here? He has to empty his hand. He has to play Doomsayer and he has to play Frost Nova, just to empty his hand. That's so bad. But he's at eight cards. Cold light Oracle is just gonna come out again. He's gonna burn another card. Oh man. This is really bad. Yeah. He might actually wait for the second Kool-Aid Oracle to try and get more than one burn. Because I don't know how much he values that one burn. Yeah, I like that. And there is a chance that um, we didn't see the last three or four cards in this deck. There's a chance that he's playing some like bounce. Um, whether it be Youthful Brewmasters or uh, the Ancient Brewmasters. Yeah. So he might be saving that second Kool-Aid Oracle for, uh, to bring it back to his hand and use it twice. I'm not actually sure. We haven't actually seen the full deck. We're, we're still missing a couple cards. Ooh, Starfall's going to take this out. Yeah. Thorson. He does. He can't actually... Oh, he can't quite. He's one mana short. He also doesn't want to mill himself, Dude. which is a big thing. If he used Cold, <laughs> Cold Light Oracle last turn, then he would have discarded a card himself, I think. Yeah. There's the Antonidas, and there's a free Ice Lance there as well. Lots of cheap spells already, so... <laughs> The funny thing is, uh, there's actually no, there is a way for him to deal with Antoninus next turn. And Antoninus that stays on the board for a couple turns is one of the only ways that Todd's of Time can lose. So if that gets placed down, you can bet anything that he'll go to any means and beyond to move, move this from the board. I wouldn't be surprised. I guess Poison Seed would be a pretty easy way to do it. Yeah. It's probably, the, yeah, it's probably the best way he has. <clears throat> to deal with this. So yeah, it's yeah. Gar, what does Garrett do here? He he can't play a seek. He can play an ice barrier because that's been popped. He can. He doesn't want to play acolyte. Doesn't want to play arcane intellect. He's just gonna play antique heal ball. For one. Oh, this is and great. Play ice barrier because he has to. This is crazy. It's fantastic. This is my favorite matchup. He could still get milled though. Cold Light Oracle Grove Tender. If he Cold Light Oracles, he's gonna mill himself. He might not be worried about that though. Yeah, I don't think he, I don't know if he cares. <laughs> I think the cards that the the mech mage, the freeze mage is gonna burn is so much better. Yeah. He's gonna have to like throw away cards in order to do this. And I don't know if he, I don't know if it's worth it for him to mill one, uh, for him to mill a single card. I think he's gonna go for it. He's gonna. Yep. Like Oracle. Oh wrath! And the second innovate, he could innovate Thorison. Yeah. Oh, and he could wrath this three three. He could innovate Thorison. He yeah, playing the innovate first to empty his hand was really smart. It's actually some. I, I, I like the Innervate Thorson here. But it looks like he's going to favor the swipe. This is so crazy. This is just such an insane matchup. I can't believe this is. I, I just can't believe this is a match that we're actually seeing. Blizzard. Nah. Nah, Blizzard's not too bad. There's not a lot of board control in this matchup. Yeah, he hasn't burned that many cards. But again, he's in a position where he has to empty his hand. Uh, he has to use. He, the Colette Oracle's out of way. He knows that. So that's something that he can take Sauls in. I think the Grove Tenders are done as well, right? Uh, has he only used one Grove Tender? He might have used both. I'm not sure. Uh, but second Naturalize is still something that he has to worry about. And at this, yeah, and that's a pretty big deal. He's also got to get through a lot of points of damage. 
yeah, this is getting a little bit scary for the Freeze Mage. And as I say, there's so many cards in his hand that are dead right now. Ice Block, Arcane Intellect, Acolyte of Pain. <sighs> he doesn't want to play Doomsayer because he doesn't have a follow-up for Doomsayer. Um, I guess there is kind of an argument maybe for Doomsayer and Kona Cold. Yeah. Mostly to get the Kona Cold out of your hand. Uh, you clear the board in case there is any bounce. You stop them being bounced back. Yeah. So I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see Doomsayer Kona Cold here. Plus a ping. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, is this actually going to ping off the cold light? Which is interesting. It's not pinging off one of the armor. It's more heal. <laughs> that's insane. He has 24 points of heal in his hand. 24 points of heal. Um, so keep her to silence, and then it uh, looks like uh, Innervate Emperor Thorson is going to be the play here. Really strong stuff. And this sort of forces Gar next turn to... Um, this is, he might Archmage Antonitis Frost Nova. Yeah, I can see that. But that's pretty risky. Um... Okay, so if he Archimage Antonitis Frost Nova, he'll be at seven cards. So even if Naturalize does come out on the Antonitis, he's still not going to overdraw. But I think he wants to wait till he sees that second Naturalize before he plays that Archimage Antonitis onto the board. Unless he knows that he's going to get at least two Fireballs from it, he doesn't want to just throw it out there all willy-nilly. So what do you, th what do you think about Antonitis uh, Frostbolt Icelands on the Thorson? Get yourself up to four fireballs. You guarantee two from your archmage. Mm -hmm. That that might be the better option if he decides to go for that play. I mean, other other than that, he could just go for like fireball, and then yeah, just fireball. Maybe even try and draw. But <laughs> trying to draw that sounds pretty scary. That's yeah. pretty dangerous at this point. He can rule Four out cards. the cold light oracles, but okay, yeah, here we go. Right, uh, Archimage Antonidas Frost Nova is the play. Okay. He's gonna yeah, he's gonna Iceland's face as well. Mm -hmm. I guess he wants he wants to preserve the fro the frostbolt for burn. There's Starfall, so he can clear the Antonidas here. <laughs> He can Starfall Wrath, or he can Poison Seeds. I'm not sure if he wants to Poison Seeds here, because he'd be put, he'd be give, activating that Doomsayer. Um, yeah, you're essentially giving him the Doomsayer back. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's, I think you probably Starfall and Wrath here, or Wrath and Starfall if you prefer. Doesn't really matter which order you do it in. Oh, off the top, I don't know if he wants to use that though. Well, I, uh, he has to now. He, he yeah, because he wrath for one. He could he could pyromancer and starfall. It would first yeah, serve the same purpose, but um, it's gonna naturalize. So that's gonna be another card burned. That's oh, actually not too be... bad. What's gonna get burned for Gara? Oh no, that's actually important because that's just extra yeah. burn that he's gone through. Now whose archmage Antonitis is gone? He has a limited <laughs> amount of. Gara shaking his head. He can't. I don't think he can win. There's a limited amount of damage in the deck. Uh, he's used an Ice Lance, so all he has left is Frostbolt Ice Lance uh, and five Fireballs and a Pyroblast. Wow, there are two cards left in the deck for Gara. Two cards! For Tykes. Oh no! Eight. He's that gonna is... hit Tykes so much quicker. And Tykes is just drawing his cards now. He's cycling his Wrath. He's gonna. Is he gonna draw with the Ancient of Lore? I wish this. This picture of Tides on the still image was a was a Twitch chat emote. <laughs> because that's exactly what Tides' face is like right now. He's sitting, he's like, I could do anything and win. In his hand right now, just in his hand alone, he has 29 points of heal. That's absolutely insane. He doesn't even have to do damage. All he has to do is just sit on the board and heal. He's almost out of cards. One card left. One of those is a Ice Lance, I think. And oh no, it's Alex Charles a Pyroblast. If I'm correct. So so can Gar Gar can win here with the Alex Straza, right? But he's just gonna heal back up. I mean he could heal bot double he could heal bot healing touch. He could poison seed, starfall, double healing touch. 
Wow. That's insane. <laughs> Double healing touch puts him up to... That puts him up to full health! Oh, what?! Boy. That just cancels out the Alexstrasza! <laughs> oh... Yeah. Ankara just doesn't have enough to put it down from 30, right? Doesn't have enough oomph. Or 27. I guess he could use the Thalnos. I think he has 30. Uh, the last card might be Pyroblast. Um, but he's just got. So, Tai just has so much heal. Yeah, the last card. Oh, no, oh it's the last Blizzard. card's Blizzard. So does he not. He doesn't run Pyroblast? Well, I mean, we've seen his entire deck, so. Yeah. <laughs> you can say pretty safely. Yeah, he's just going to throw as much damage as possible at him. But uh, I think that's going to be game. Uh, he doesn't have enough damage. Only 18 damage left in the deck. There's going to be... He's going to heal back up to full health this turn. Yep, and he's going to start taking fatigue. Yep. So I guess not quite full the... health. Yeah. They're going to go for the Ancient of Lore and then a healing touch. <laughs> Virtually full health. Yeah. Can... And that's it. Okay. The Mill Druid again beats the Freeze Mage. What a crazy match that was. Yeah, uh, I think... Judging by the performance of this deck and how Tides plays the matchups, it seems like he saves this deck for last and is just targeting Freeze Mage. Uh, which is actually a really smart strategy because Freeze Mage is just so popular right now. Um, really fantastic call if that's why he made it. And wow. I mean, you, you said it yourself already in the semifinals. On the other side of the bracket, there's two Freeze Mages already there. It was, so. one, it was one, because Jab, it's Jab versus Chucky. So oh, okay. Tice, Tice is going to be really hoping that he's going to be hoping that Forsen beats Tice in our last quarterfinal, and then he's going to hope that Chucky beats Jab in the other semifinal. So that the final, so that then he gets to play Freeze Mage players all the way through. Oh my God, it it it's working because it, it just doesn't seem like no matter what you do as the Freeze Mage in that situation, it just doesn't seem like you have enough damage. Uh, you basically have to have the perfect um, curve. You have to have, like, Alexstrasza right on turn 9. The Druid has to not draw into any of their mill, their mill spells. And then you have to be able to kill them before they can draw into their healing as well. That seems like a really lopsided matchup. Uh, it seems really close to how the Warrior matchup plays out, where the Warrior doesn't necessarily have to put pressure and do damage. All they have to do is get as much life gain as possible. And eventually they'll just win in the War of Attrition. They'll win because the Mage will run out of damage. And that's exactly what happened. Absolutely. Well, we're going to see Tides tomorrow in our semifinals. We have one game left for you today, our final quarterfinal. It's Tice versus Forsen. And I've just seen on Twitter, Tice posted a screenshot from the Ghost of Gamers matchup screen of their previous encounters. Tice is 4-0 against Forsen in competitive matches. So, uh, And he just said, are you ready this time? So Tice is starting the trash talk. Um, and Tides of Time saying that his brother just opened a golden gruel from the pack he got spectating his match in the tournament. So this wasn't even a, a good matchup for <laughs> Tides. It was good for his whole family. Yeah. So there you go. That's, uh, wow. I can't believe that match. That's just so crazy. We're going to, we'll talk about it, I'm sure, after the break as well. But we're going to go to uh, an eight minute break now and we'll be back with our final quarterfinal of the day. Make sure, check out the charity as well. If you haven't donated yet, please do donate to Child's Play. It's what we're all here for. Kingwin for charity tournament. Child's Play, of course, buying games and consoles for kids with cancer and long term illness to help make their stays in hospital or their time a little bit easier. Also, make sure you enter the raffle exclamation mark packs gets you all the information you need so we'll be back here for tice versus force in our last quarterfinal don't go anywhere you're watching kingwin for charities easter edition 2015. <laughs> 